So I was painting the other day. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Deep Thoughts Thin Coast with me, Phil the Glacial Geek. Uh, today, I am going to be painting up some more acolytes, uh, some more with, uh, with hand flamers this time, because I'm going to be making a big, big blob of... Hand flavor do bros, uh, and I like to be WYSIWYG if I can, so that's what I'm going to be working on today. Uh, so most of these guys, these are actually figures that I got from the original Death Watch Overkill box. I have a ton of those guys, a bunch of those neophytes, uh, and that's where most of my neophytes, or uh, acolytes, sorry, came from. Same with the neophytes, all of my neophytes, well, mostly all of my neophytes came from there. And essentially, what I did with them was arms that were easy enough and out there, like this one, I could clip off at the shoulder and then I just glued on some extra flamer hands that I had from some other kits that I had. Other ones I had to cut off at the hand, I like this one here, because you can see how the arm on this one is attached to the body there. I just had to cut it off, cut it at the hand because it was holding a um, an auto pistol. So I just cut it off there and then I had a bunch of these hand flamers from like way back in the day, back in the old... Uh, the old kit sprues that used to come, <clears throat> where it was like a like a with the old Space Marines, where the uh, like it came with like the ones for the Devastator squad, and it used to come with like all the different pistols, including last pistols for Space Marines, and it came with a whole bunch of different options, bolters, everything like that, and it just came on this one sprue that was thrown in there for every single model. So I had a bunch of hand flamers from there because I'd never used them really for anything else. So that's what I've been working with, and I made them, and then I primed them with the crystal blue um, color primer from Army Painter. And it's looking really good, so the hope is that I can just paint the rest of it and then wash it and use that as the base of my skin, which I'm really excited about. So it would have saved me a lot of time if this is going to work, and I think it will. It looks like it's a right, about the right color, and then I'll wash it. Um, so that is the plan. Um, and I'll be working uh, first here with uh, Ash Gray Army Paint. Um, going to be using that on the on the armor parts, or the uh, like the exosuit part for the uh, minor minor suits, and that's what I'll be working with. Um, and I'll also be using the games, the Game Envy uh, hand painting handles, which I'm really becoming a big fan of, especially since you can just put them on all of these soda bottle caps, and it makes it super easy to switch out and move along. So um, that is the modeling part that I'm going to be working on. Uh, as for the topic of discussion today, I'm going to be talking about, are you having fun yet? And I know it sounds like a simple thing, and I know it sounds like, um, obviously, if we're doing this as a hobby, we're having fun. But it's a question that I think deserves to be asked and needs to be asked all the time when you're doing something like this. Because this kind of hobby is super involved. It's super involved. Uh, it can be very complex. And if you're not having fun while doing it, honestly, it becomes it can become monotonous and a chore. And at that point... Why are you doing it if that's what it's become? And <clears throat> there's all aspects of this hobby, and I've, I've gone over this before, that you know, do the hobby that you want it to be and make sure that it's what you want. But at the end of the day, we all have things that we, uh, that we strive to do, that we strive to want. So when we go to you know, a, a tournament or we go into the game store and we see that guy with, the, with the, the army that he's been painting for years, and it just came out perfectly. It's got all, everything looks awesome. It's on a really beautiful display board. Uh, this happens a lot at the bigger tournaments that I go to. You see the guys that go there who are there for the painting jobs. Like, that's what they do. That's what, they, that's what they're there for. That is their hobby to them, is the painting. And you see these and you're like, wow, that's what I wish I had, you know? And then you go back to your hobby, you know, your hobby desk or your paint station and you start painting them. And you realize you are not that good, you know, and granted, they've probably been painting for, you know, decades longer than I have and it doesn't make a difference. It's still at that moment when I'm painting, <clears throat> I feel very discouraged that, you know, this is, you know, this is, I'm not, it's not that good. And it becomes a point where you just, it's not fun to do it. And I talked about this in my last video about how to become a better hobby painter and it's just about doing the paint getting paint on there and that's true that's very true and that's why i try to keep myself you know i look at my melty cow men like i've talked about <clears throat> and i keep in mind where i've come from to keep myself going but there are times when i'm just like this is not fun to be doing at this moment and 
it happens a lot, you know, and we all run out of uh, like the steam to do it. But what you have to do is you have, in those moments when it's not fun, you need to take a moment to step back and go, why am I doing this? You know, why am I doing this? Like we do with anything we do in life. Why are we doing this? Is it for, you know, it should be for fun. That's what this hobby is, is it's meant to be for fun. And if I'm not having fun, you have to ask yourself, why am I not having fun? Am I not having fun doing this because it's just like the same models that I'm painting over and over and over again because I need to run this new horde army that I've decided that I want to play? Or is it not fun because I actually don't like hobby or I don't like this game? I don't like the story. I don't like the models. I don't like this. And <clears throat> it's important to be aware of this because if it gets to that point, then it's 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 why are you doing this? Why are you doing it plain and simple and at those moments when you're not having fun and it can be you know you come to that decision that well i just don't like this hobby you need to ask yourself an important question what don't i like about the hobby and in those moments when i look at those painting the, the paint jobs and they're not as good as mine and i've gone back to my paint studio my paint studio my desk and i've started painting models and they're not looking as good as those models and i'm suddenly like oh i don't want to be doing this I ask myself, well, why are you doing it? And the answer is because I usually end up liking the models that I end up painting. And I like pl playing with painted models. And at that point, I realize it's not that I'm not having fun. It's not that I don't want to do this. It's that I'm trying to compare myself to something that in the end, I don't really want. You know, I don't want to be a professional painter. I want to be able to professionally paint models. But I don't want to put in the hours upon hours of effort and time uh, that it takes to learn the skill to the point that they have. I don't want to spend, you know, an enormous and about a time honing my my hand so that I can put the perfect the perfect eyeball in every single model. I don't want to spend nine hours getting the perfect wet blend on all of my swords. That's not what I want. You know, I wish I could just like flip a switch and suddenly have those skills, but I don't want to put in the effort to do that. So I realize that what I'm not having fun with is actually comparing myself to the people who did want to do that, that did want to put in the effort, that did want to learn all of those skills and put in the 47 layers that it takes to glaze an armor so that it looks realistic, you know, or make skin tones that look like human flesh. That's not what I want to do. And that's not what I'm going to do. So in those moments when I realize that I'm not happy, it's not that I'm not happy with painting. It's not that I'm not happy with Warhammer. It's that I'm not happy with what I'm comparing myself to. So then I take a step back and I look at all the other models that are out there. You know, everything from my Melty Cowman to, you know, to other opponents that I face in tournaments, to other people that I see going by, to people that I see sharing on Facebook. And I realize that the thing that I like about all of that is that they put paint on them, that there's any kind of paint on those models. The fact is that a lot of them have put in time and effort. You know, some of them have put in more time and effort because that's what they want to do. But at the end of the day, they put in some effort, even if the effort was to, you know, to, to spray the color, put in a few other details and then wash it. That's fine. If that's the effort that they want to put into it, it looks cool. There has been some effort put into it and I'm good to go. And that's when I realized that's what I like about hobby painting is putting in the amount of effort that I want to and getting out whatever whatever end result occurs because of that. So, you know, in my case it's pretty decent. I like I like my 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 level of paint, you know? I think it looks pretty decent. I think it looks pretty good. It's not going to win a golden demon. It's not going to go and I'm not going to be able to open up my own you know, painting studio with, with the abilities that I have and the speed that it takes me to get through a billion models. But at the same time, I can be happy with the models that I paint and what, I, it, what it is that I end up creating. And that's why it's important to ask these questions, are you having fun yet? And I realize in those moments that yes, I am having fun because I like to play the game, I like to talk to people about the game, I like the lore, I like reading the books, I like painting models. I like having painted models. I like 
going to the store or going to a battle report with painted models. I like going to tournaments, being able to talk to people, play a bunch of games, and just be able to sit around and have people come by and look at your models. I like that. I like all of that. And that's why I do the hobby is because it is fun for me. But you have to understand and realize and ask yourself these questions. Why am I doing certain things? Why am I upset about certain things? What is keeping me from finding my the ultimate enjoyment with this hobby? And be honest with yourself, you know? So I've been having a heck of a time trying to figure out what I'm doing with these Gene Steeler Cult. You know, I look at the codex, I look at the models, I look at what they can do, and I sit back and I go, you know what? They've got all the tools to be super competitive. You know, they've got great psychic phase, they've got great, great close combat, they're cheap, you can put a whole bunch of them out there, they've got some really cool, fun tactics that they can use that are really good at, 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 at gaming within, you know, with, with, within the game mechanics of it. And you take a step back and you go, these are going to be great. And I was super excited when the Gene Steeler Cult Codex came out because I've been having a heck of a time with my with my with my Dark Angels trying to find a good competitive list. You know, I was I was racking my brain trying to find it, and in the end, I wound up uh, allying in some knights, which is fun. Knights look amazing. I've got a cool knight in the process right now. I don't know. I don't think you you can't see it right now, uh, but it's almost done. It's like, ooh, it's coming along really cool. It did some cool things that I've never done before that I'm very excited about. That are going to look really cool <clears throat> but anyway so knights look cool and i was really excited about that and i thought it was a good way to ally it in and i thought that i was coming up with it but i struggled you know i struggled in these tournaments and i did i did okay you know going um you know getting the different the scores that i did i think i went what was it like three and three i think at, at lvo and you, you know going along at, at, at a lot of these tournaments i was doing all right i got stomped on one tournament with a list that I thought was going to be good, but it wasn't, obviously. <laughs> um, but that's what it comes down to, is that you try to figure these things out. And I was having, I was struggling with it. So I was excited to have an army with a codex that was new, that looked like it had the tools to do it. And since then, I've been struggling to find what it is that I want to do with these, with the with them competitively. You know, I thought competitively that, that all these tools are there, but what do I do? And I suddenly found myself almost at a, um, a loss because of how much there was to work with. You know, do I want to go with like a gajillion acolytes? Do I want to go heavy on with the with the aberrants? I've loved the aberrants from like day one. They look so cool. Acolytes are fun and I've got a ton of them because of all the, you know, the stuff that I've been collecting uh, since they first came out in 7th edition. Um, and I've got all these tools and I've got all these things. I bought the new models and characters that all do cool different things and look really interesting. But trying to figure out how to put them together into a super competitive list has been driving me nuts. Absolutely nuts. Like to the point that I would I would look and I would make a list and I would just get angry at myself while making these lists trying to figure it out. Um, today I had a, a game, a practice game that I had a list that was my latest, in, uh, you know, uh, latest latest list that I was putting together and it had two 20 man acolyte blobs, I had two patriarchs, I had two magus, a primus, I had two uh, keller morphs, I had uh, two squads of aberrants, I had like the whole kit and caboodle, a whole bunch of uh, neophytes, a whole bunch of, of, of brood brothers and I was putting it together and I was like it looked to me to be kind of the way the meta was going you know it didn't have any of the cool it didn't have any trucks or vehicles Actually, the little slip-up that I had there might get to me, and I'll get back to that in a second. It didn't have any of those things. It had kind of all the stuff that you consider, you know, competitive meta meta stuff. And it had, you know, it has three of the of of the heavy weapon squads with the mortars. And I went out and I played it against my friend, and we had a blast. We had a good time. I love playing with my friend, my friend Marcus. Awesome, awesome, incredibly awesome guy. And we just had a good time. We had a good time playing. But at the end of the game, I got. I got beat pretty hard um, by his orcs. And I was sitting there and I'm looking at it and I suddenly realized that I was getting upset. Not at Marcus, not at the game, but at myself and this list and everything that was going along with this. And I was getting frustrated and angry and I'm like, why isn't this working? Why isn't it clicking? You know, and I've played a bunch of games. I've played a bunch of different types of lists. I've, I've gotten, I think I've gotten every single one of the units out on the table um, that's out there and trying to figure out how they all 
work. I've played them against different armies. I've played them against different lists. And, you know, I'm sitting there going, why, why isn't this working? Like, why isn't it clicking? You know what I mean? And I had like over a hundred models. And that's when I came, I realized at that point what was happening. You know, and I've been talking with Marcus about it. And I realized that if I wanted to make the, like, the competitive meta list, I would create a list that was not fun for me to play because at the end of the day I like winning I don't want to get just stomped into the ground going in there and getting stomped into the ground is never fun but at the end of the day I'd rather have a list that I enjoy playing and get beat than have a list that's not fun to play and makes for a bad gaming experience for me let alone my part my opponent and win because at the end of the day, winning's fun. It's all great. And it would be nice to be able to, you know, show a trophy right here in front of you guys to show that I, I won a tournament. But at the end of the day, I want to enjoy those three to six games that I play at a tournament. I'm not talking about going nine games because I'm not looking at, at winning LVO for this reason. Is that I came to that realization is that I enjoy playing the game, you know? So at the end of the day, I think I have to come to the come to grips with the fact that I need to make a list that's going to be fun for me to play, that's going to have all of the tools and fun toys that I enjoy playing that I think can be competitive, that can be good, but that necessarily you won't see at the top table at LVO, that you won't see at the top table at Adepticon this weekend. What you're going to see is you're going to see a list from me that I find fun to play with. And if it's fun for me to play with, that's all that matters, you know? And that it was a hard realization to come to because it was one of those things where I sat back and I went, are you having fun? No, I'm not having fun. And why am I not having fun? You know? And again, is it one of those things? Is like, do I not like the game? No, I like the game. Is it that I don't like the army? No, I love the army. I think the models are wonderful. These are some of the coolest looking models that I think that GW even has possible to get and play with, you know? Is it that I don't enjoy painting the army? Painting a billion dudes is a little rough, I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, I, I get through it relatively quick. As long as I keep it down to, you know, batches of five or six, I, I can handle it. It doesn't get overwhelming and it doesn't drive me nuts. Um, and I can get them done to, at a, at a, to a standard that I find enjoyable, that I find, you know, I find pleasure in seeing an army painted that way. Um it's also been interesting since the army painter stuff, like trying to figure out uh, how things all work, you know, which, which what paints are going to get me the same color that I want or or doing that. I found that actually very interesting trying to figure this out and trying to work with a whole bunch of different paints that I've never worked with before. I've got a bajillion different colors that I can choose from in different shades and it's been fun. So I enjoy that and I enjoy playing with the models. I enjoy looking at the models. I enjoy fielding the models and I enjoy games with the models. But then I had to realize, what is it that I want out of this game? And I realized what I want is I want to enjoy myself. You know? At LVO, I had this realization at LVO. Uh, the first time I went there, I was like, I need to make the most out of this. And, you know, I played the, the, you know, the full regular tournament and I had my six games. But then on the Sunday, I signed up for the RTT and got up really early because I was like, I need to go and I need to... I need to play and I need, you know, I'm, I'm here to play games and I need to play games. I need to make the most of it. I need to try to win, an, you know, an RTT to put myself up at the top there. And I realized this year that doing that was going to be too stressful and I didn't want to do it. So I decided that I was going to take Sunday off at the, t at the con and just walk around and see what was going on, go to the vendor hall, catch up with some friends who were doing the long war doubles, you know, catch up with from some friends who are just hanging around that I haven't seen in a while from Alaska, which was incredible. And I realized that what I want, it, this came to me today. And what I got was what I want out of this game is to enjoy myself. I want to try to be competitive. I like going to tournaments. I want to try to win. That's not, I'm not going out there. I'm like, you know, kudos to the guy who went with just a war, with a, just a Warhound Titan to, at, at LVO. I'm sure it looked awesome. I'm sure it was a ton of fun. I'm sure he had a blast. But to me, I don't want to just go into, into a tournament with a list that I think is just going to get run over the first time it looks at, you know, 
looks at a guardsman. I, I want to be able to have a list that I feel like I can be competitive in any kind of army, that, any, any list that I go up against. But at the same time, it's got to be with a gameplay and a method that I'm going to enjoy. If the whole idea for the list is that it's just going to go out there and just like gum up the works for four rounds until time runs out and then I've got more points, that's going to be boring to do for one game, let alone for three games a day. It's just going to be boring, you know? And at the end of the day, sure, that might get me a win. It might keep me in the top bracket, but I'm going to be bored. And if the dice go cold on me or my opponent get, it comes up with an awesome counter to what I'm doing and I lose that game, I'm now in a situation where I didn't have fun playing because I was playing in a way that I don't find interesting and I don't have an undefeated record, you know? And that's not cool. That's not fun. That's not why I do this hobby, you know? If I just wanted a trophy, I could go down to the store and buy a trophy and put my name on it if that's what I want. But I play these games because I want to enjoy playing them, you know? And like I said, I want to be competitive. I want to try. And I'm going to keep trying to find a list that's fun, that's that's good, that's competitive, that's going to keep me in these tournaments, but that I enjoy playing. So ask yourself, why are you having fun yet? And if you're honest with yourself and the answer is no, ask yourself why. And find out why. And what can you do to fix that why so that you are having fun? Do you not enjoy painting? Do you just despise picking up a paintbrush? If that's the case, get a color primer, prime all your prime, prime all your models. No, there's no one out there who can't just rattle can color prime a model. Even that, just if your blood angels are just primed red, it's still better than gray plastic. You know, at the end of the day, just pick up a can of of red primer. You know, and and just prime it red. And if that's it, call it a day. Or prime it red, give it a wash, and now you've got details in it and it's red. You're good to go. Go for it. It won't win you prizes. It may not even be enough to get you uh, past the requirements at tournaments, but it will be better than just showing up at the game store with a bunch of gray plastic. And it's something that you can do that will increase your enjoyment of the game. Because you enjoy playing the game, obviously. Because at that point, if you don't like modeling, you're not doing this for the just the hobby aspect of it. You're doing this because you enjoy the game. You enjoy the lore or something like that. So if that's the case, you're going to increase your enjoyment on the game by finding ways around the things that annoy you and that bring down the enjoyment of this hobby. Do it. Go out there. And then if you want to do it and you want to go to a tournament and you just need the three color minimum, color prime it, paint the bolters a different color, and wash it. That's three colors right there. You're good to go. Paint the base. You're good to go. Don't go do de doing details if it's going to make you miserable. It's not worth it. It's really not not worth it. You know? Just do what's going to make you happy and make it work. You know? Do you enjoy narrative games? Then don't play ITC. No one's going to look down on you for not playing ITC. There are tons and tons of narrative missions, even if you can't think up your own. There are tons of narrative missions in all of the books. From the starter, from the base rule book all the way up to Vigilus now, there are narrative missions that you can play that you can have fun, you know? They're not all going to be competitive ones, but if that's what you enjoy is just telling the story and going out and doing it, do it and find someone to do it with, you know? Or get someone to do it with and, and see if they enjoy it too. Let them give it a shot, you know? If you enjoy going into a game and treating it like a chess game where the two sides have equal chance of winning it, then do an ITC game. Even if you're not in a tournament, even if you're just hanging out with friends in your garage and you have no plans on going to a big tournament, small tournament, any tournament, even if this is the only kind of gaming that you do is once a month getting together with your friends in your garage to play, play an ITC mission. Because then you can play where it's just set in stone, you've got primary missions, you've got secondary missions, you've got tertiary missions, everything is set there and it's all left with the same even playing field. If that's what you enjoy, do that, you know? There are millions of people that enjoy playing chess, and that's as equal as you can get. No one's getting a hobby advantage because they bought better pieces for a chessboard. You know, no one's getting a better a better score because they painted up their chess pieces. 
There's something about that that people enjoy, and it's that competitive portion of it. And that's absolutely awesome. If that's what you enjoy, do it. Do it. You don't have to be at a tournament to play ITC. You don't have to be at a tournament to play the Nova missions. You don't have to be at Adepticon to play the Adepticon missions. You just need two people, you and a friend, that agree to play to those missions. And play them. And enjoy it. You know? If you just want to go to tournaments to have fun, go to tournaments to have fun. You know? That first round, you may get paired up against someone who's, you know, gunning for the top of the ITC levels. But after that, you're going to be paired up with people who are on your same level. You know? If you lose that first round, your next round, you're going to be pairing with someone who else lost their first round. Third round, you're going to be paired up with someone who's lost their first and second rounds. You know? And once you get to ICC, if you're into round six, you're, if you've lost every, all five rounds, you're going to be playing against someone who else lost all five rounds. And the two of you can have fun. You know? That's what it is all about, is find what you have and make those expectations what it is that you gun for. So if I want to go and I want to have a fully painted army, I can have a fully painted army. As long as I set the expectations to what I want that fully painted army to be. Do I want it to be a master class in, in painting? Do I want my models to be able to, to be in a retrospective at the MoMA? Then I better set my expectations for that and understand that that's going to require hours and hours of skill building. It's going to be hours and hours of practice taking models, not getting what I want, putting it into the stripper to get the model back out so I can just practice painting that model. You know, most of the best painters out there don't necessarily have fully painted armies. They've got a whole bunch of different models from a bunch of different places that are all painted different colors because they wanted to paint. That's where they find their enjoyment. That's where they find their spark, their joy, is from doing that. So if that's what you want, do it. Make it happen and realize that what you're looking for at that point is enjoying painting and having beautiful models that you can bring to the game store, that you can bring to tournaments, that you can bring to competitions, you know? And then don't hold yourself to the same competitive standard that someone else wants to do, you know? Look at Nick Brown when he his enjoyment in the game is, is, is doing well at these tournaments. So he doesn't have a love for the lore of a specific army. He plays whatever army he thinks can give him the edge that he wants. And that's why he has like a thousand different armies because he finds the best uh, the best kits that he can and makes them work for him. You know, he doesn't enjoy painting. Painting to him is just something that he does so that he can get the models ready for tournaments so that he can actually get past, you know, past the requirements. So that's why he worked with Ar the army painter to, to, to work with their program, the you know, the spray, paint, dip and done is because he can then get an entire army done in a week after he came up with the idea and get it ready for get it ready for the you know the big show at the tournament and he can get it done quick enough it doesn't take him away from all the other aspects of the of the of the hobby that he enjoys and he can get back to doing what he loves so do that that's why army painter has their the process that they have like the spray paint dip and done you know you're not going to win a golden demon award with that with that method but what you will have is a fully painted army that's fun to play with and you can be done with that aspect of the hobby that you don't enjoy. But if you do enjoy it, you can put more, more effort into it. Spend more time painting those models. You know, Spend an entire year painting up an army that by the time it's ready has gotten a new codex and doesn't, doesn't do what you wanted it to do, but it looks beautiful. And you can take that to a tournament and have fun playing with the models that you have, with the models that you think are cool, and enjoy yourself. And show off your cool paint job, have people ooh and on it, and enjoy the hobby. Do that. And all of this only comes if you're, if you're super, super honest with yourself. And ask yourself, am I having fun yet? Because if you're not, then don't do what you're not having fun with. And find out why it is that you don't have fun with it. So is it that you don't like painting? Or is it that you don't like that you're comparing your paint job to a professional painter's paint job? Do you not like playing the game? Or is it that you don't like playing competitively? Because the idea of, you know, going for blood just doesn't doesn't do it for you. You just would rather go and, and throw together a completely unbalanced list to see what happens. Because it would be fun to see an ongoing horde of, of termagants just flowing off the table edge as your one, you know, squad of marines just tries to mow them down with the bolters left and right until they die to the last man. And at the end of it, 
you, you know, clink glasses with your friend and you laugh about how fun that was and, you know, how many termagons did they kill down, you know, imagining them running out of bolter, trying to, trying to share clips because they've run out of bullets. That sounds amazing, you know? Do you want to make up, like, a completely different model? Because kit bashing is fun to you, you know? I saw a cool kit bash which looked really great. It was actually on Tabletop Tactics. Uh, they were using it for the Lord Discordant. They actually hadn't... They made it beforehand, but it was, like... It was their kit bash for a warp smith, and it looked really cool. It was, like, on these on his legs. I think it looked like the legs from uh, uh, from an Armager Dune Crawler. Um, and it was, like, in this, like... It was basically like a warp smith just sitting in this like in this capsule on these legs, and it looked really cool. It wasn't the 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 Lord Discordant, but it would be a really cool proxy for the Lord Discordant, and that looks awesome. You know why not do that? You know who cares if a TO at a tournament isn't going to okay your proxy if that's what you want to do? You want to make a cool looking model? Do you want to make it look like your that your you know your your knight is is kicking in the side of you know his karate kicking through a wall? Go do it. You know, if people accuse you of, 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 of modeling for advantage, tell them to go sit on it. You know, if you're doing it because you think it's fun, you think it's cool, do it. Have fun. And, and, and find that joy and find out what it is that's holding you back from enjoying what it is that you're doing. Because this hobby is not worth doing if you're not having fun. And if you're not having fun, something is wrong. And find out what it is. You know, maybe at the end of the day, you don't enjoy playing the game. Maybe at the end of the day, you just love the lore of Warhammer 40,000. And then just buy every book that Black Library comes out with. You know, write your own fan fiction. You know, do like Alpha Busa and make your own, you know, animated show about the lore. You know, <laughs> it's awesome. There's so many different ways of enjoying this hobby. From making movies to doing cosplay to painting models, to building models, to competitively gaming with the best of them for the top table at ITC, to putting on like a 40 million point uh, epic super battle with your friends in your garage over the course of a weekend or a week even over the summer. Whatever it is, there's so many different ways to enjoy this hobby that if you're not having fun, if you find yourself just getting salty at the game, if you find yourself just getting salty at your desk, just looking and glaring at your work table, if you just find yourself yelling at people on the internet because of what they got wrong, you're doing it wrong. And you're, something is wrong. And that shouldn't be how this hobby is to be enjoyed. You need to find out why you're not happy with it and change it. And take ownership of it and be deadly super honest with yourself about what it is that you're feeling and make sure that you're doing what it is that's going to make you happy. Because something brought you here. Something got you into this hobby. Find out what that spark was and make sure you got kindling on that part. As opposed to worrying about the other parts that didn't spark for you. Worry about the parts that do. And make it happen. You know? Because there's nothing wrong with enjoying this book as Math Hammer. There's nothing wrong with enjoying this book for the cool pictures. There's nothing wrong with enjoying this book for the cool lore. There's nothing wrong with enjoying this book by looking at the paint schemes. There's nothing wrong with enjoying this book for all of it. But make sure that you are doing, finding your part in this book that you enjoy and that brings you, the, brings you enjoyment. And ask yourself the super serious question, am I having fun yet? And if the answer is no, fix it. Because this hobby is too cool, with too many facets, with so much going on, for you to not be having fun. So do it. It's important. Super important. It's the thing that's, that's brought me back from the edge of, of despair a number of times in this hobby. Is asking myself that question, am I having fun yet? And if the answer is no, then you're doing it wrong. And it needs to change. So, I know I got animated there. <laughs> But I think it's it, this gets me going. This gets me excited. This gets me animated talking about this because I do love this hobby. I do love the lore. I love the models. I love the game. I love painting. I love having painted models. I love having painted armies. I love seeing other people's painted armies. I love hearing other people's stories and backstories about their, their homebrew chapter. I love playing narrative games. I love playing competitive games. I like going to tournaments. 
I like going to tournaments and seeing the people who don't play at tournaments that just come with their painted armies at tournaments. I love hanging out with people at tournaments after the games are over. I just, I love this hobby. And I have to ask myself constantly, am I having fun yet with certain aspects of the hobby? And if I'm not, that I have to be strong enough with myself to answer those questions. So, am I going to be winning LVO? Probably not. Not if this is how I think about it. Not if I have any other concern other than what does the what mass out on this list? Because that's how you win LVO, is that you enjoy the math hammer, is that you enjoy the crunchiness of figuring out the best synergies, the best options, the, the optimal choices. That's how you win ITC. And becoming super good at playing those optimal choices. That's how you win. And you enjoy yourself doing it. Some of the most enjoyable people and enjoyable games that I've had playing 40k at tournaments has has been against people who are gunning for the top tables you know who are in the top the top the top portions of the lvo that's how you do it you compete for them and they enjoy it and they're having fun playing that game that way i realize for me that's not necessarily the way it is and it sometimes it's a hard decision you know you could be sitting there going like i want to paint like really beautiful army have a miserable time doing it and then come to the realization that maybe what I just want is just a painted army. You know? And there is nothing wrong with that. Make sure you find that joy and make sure that you keep that joy going because this this hobby is too expensive and too time consuming to not be enjoying yourself while you're doing it. So, let me know how you guys make sure that you guys are having fun and enjoying what you're doing there. Do you share it with friends? Is is proselytizing the, the grim dark future what brings you joy? Is it is it enjoying what other people do? What brings you joy with this hobby? Let me know down below what brings you joy in this hobby. And let me know what you've done to counter the parts that you don't enjoy. So keep the conversation going down there. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate all the help that all of you guys have done for this channel. Even by watching it, by subscribing, by liking the videos. All of that helps. And all of the people that support me on Patreon, thank you so much for everything that you've done for me. You've been able to allow me to keep doing what I'm doing. Thanks to the Army Painter for supplying the supplies. You know, thanks to Game Envy for supplying the, the holders. Thank you to everyone who has helped me do what it is that I'm doing. You know, uh, at LVO, I had, a, I had someone come up to me, and I apologize that I can't remember your name. Came up to me wearing one of my t-shirts, and I have never felt, like, so excited in my entire life, I don't think, that when I saw this guy come up to me in one of my t-shirts, and I was like, that's my t-shirt that you're wearing. <laughs> I love it. I love the support that you guys have all done for me and, 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 and help me to keep this uh, keep this channel going and, and growing and keep it growing the way it is. So thank you all for everything you've done and for all the joy in this hobby that you've brought me. So thank you guys very much. I hope you've all enjoyed this. I certainly have. I have been Phil the Glacial Geek as always. And until next time, have fun. <laughs>